Installations of DCM Pro must be conducted by a qualified professional. Make sure to isolate the power supply to the thermostat during the process of installation. You should make sure you have the following components with you before beginning. A DCM Pro mat, DCM Pro cable, DCM Pro perimeter strip, warm-up insulation boards, a warm-up thermostat and floor sensor. And if waterproofing is required, some DCM Pro waterproofing tape. Before we begin, identify a suitable location for your thermostat and fit a 35mm deep electrical back box in place ready for installation. It is important to prepare your subfloor before laying your DCM Pro mat. If you are dealing with a concrete subfloor, be sure to clean it thoroughly and remove all dust particles. Here you can see the different layers that would be laid on a concrete subfloor. Ideally, you would add flexible tile adhesive, warm-up insulation boards, the DCM Pro mat, your DCM Pro heating cable, tile adhesive or levelling compound, followed by your floor finish, whatever it may be. For a timber subfloor, the process is slightly different. You should be able to see the following structure in your flooring. Insulation between a series of joists, a floor deck, flexible tile adhesive, warm-up insulation boards screwed down, the DCM Pro mat, your DCM Pro heating cable, tile adhesive or self-leveling compound, followed by your chosen floor finish. For further information on preparation of timber subfloors for tiling, refer to local tiling standards. To install insulation boards, simply mix and lay a full bed of flexible tile adhesive and bed the insulation boards into the mix in a brickwork fashion. For timber subfloors, the insulation boards will have to be adhered and then screwed down at 200mm centres. The insulation boards can be cut to the exact shape required using a utility knife. Make sure that the surface of the insulation boards is smooth and clean before proceeding to the next step. If you are installing DCM Pro directly on timber or sand and cement screeded floors, then the subfloor must be primed first. It is essential that the surface of your subfloor is free of dirt and dust particles. Be sure to clean it thoroughly before you begin priming. Before you begin laying the mat, be sure to have installed the perimeter strip around the corners of the room and on any penetrations through the floor. Partially remove the backing from one corner of the mat and stick in position before removing the rest of the backing. Lay the mat directly onto the insulation boards. When you reach a wall or a permanent structure, you will need to cut the membrane with either a utility knife or a pair of scissors. Take care when cutting the mat and try to make your cuts as straight as possible where you can. When laying subsequent runs of the mat, ensure that they are tightly butted up together and that the castellations of the mats are aligned. Now that the DCM Pro mat is laid, you need to mark out the areas where permanent structures will be installed, such as baths, showers, sinks, toilets, kitchen units and so on. Do not install underfloor heating under permanent structures of a room or permanent furniture. This may cause the heating system to overheat. Mark these areas up with tape or a marker pen directly onto the mat. You will use these markings as a reference point when laying the cable. It is essential that you perform a resistance test and an insulation resistance test on the heater before, during and after the installation to ensure no damage has occurred at any stage of the installation. The installer must compare the results of the tests to the values provided in your installation manual and log the results in the control card. This control card must then be kept for warranty purposes. If the test demonstrates a failure, a break or a leakage, please contact Warm-Up's technical team for guidance by calling our free 24-7 technical helpline on 0345 345 2288. This first test is to verify the heating cable resistance. Connect a multimeter to the heater across live and neutral in order to determine the resistance. 
make sure that the results of the tests show measurements that are within plus or minus 5% of the resistance values provided in the installation manual. Then record your results in the control card. Finally, test the resistance of your floor sensor by using a multimeter set to a 20 kilo ohm range. Connect the meter to the sensor leads and compare the results with the expected figures in the installation manual. Make sure you record these results in the control card. Next, thread the cold tail up the wall and through the electrical back box. If you look at step 4 in your installation manual, you will find a table explaining what size cable you need to cover an area and the spacing required. We advise you consult this table before installing the heating cable into the DCM Pro mat. You will also find, on the same page, a series of diagrams representing room structures. For maximum efficiency and product satisfaction, we advise you use these layouts to draw your own plans and follow your drawings when laying your DCM Pro cable. In most cases, the standard spacing between the cable across the entire room must be three castellations. However, depending on the heat output you require, you may find that your cable needs to be spaced either two or four castellations apart. You can find this information in step four of your installation manual. Begin laying the cable in the channels of the DCM Pro membrane with the correct spacing. When laying the cable, it is fundamental that you follow these essential rules. There must be a minimum of 60 millimeters or two castellations between parallel heating cables. Maintain a perimeter spacing around the room at half your intended cable to cable spacing. Make sure that the cables are a minimum distance of 60 millimeters from other sources of heat, such as hot water pipes, lighting fixtures, or chimneys. Never cross the cable over another run, over cold tails, or over the floor sensor. This will cause your system to overheat and will damage your cable. Do not install the cable by bending it around the points of the castellations. You must never cut, shorten, extend or leave the heating cable in a void in the floor. It must be fully installed within the layer of tile adhesive or leveling compound. If you have excess cable left over, consider changing the spacing or getting a different size cable to fit your area. Whenever there is an expansion joint, be sure to use individual heating cables to cover the area on either side of the joint. Do not cross an expansion joint with the heating cable, as this could damage your system. Verify that the cable is embedded within the mat throughout its entire length. When you have confirmed the cable has not been damaged, channel a section in the DCM Pro mat for the cold tail joint, so it sits at the same height as the heater. Use a utility knife to cut out the marked space in the mat and place the cold tail joint in the cutout. Secure the joint in place using a tab of electrical tape on the cold tail. Do not tape over the manufactured joints or heating cable, as these must be fully embedded within the tile adhesive or leveling compound. At the end of the heating cable, you will find a termination joint. Repeat the process used for the cold tail with the termination joint, ensuring that it is embedded in the mat and is the same height as the heater. Once the heating cable has been installed, it is time to install the floor probe. Make sure the probe is installed 150 millimeters into the heated area between two parallel heating cable runs. Never place the probe immediately next to a cable run or over a cable run. This will provide false readings on your thermostat and will damage the system. Conduct another resistance test and insulation resistance test on the heater. Be sure to record all of your readings in the control card. There will be times when waterproofing will be required for your system. For instance, in bathrooms due to the high level of exposure to water. Remember, if you are using a proprietary waterproofing system, a leveling compound must first be laid over the DCM Pro system to provide a finished surface to install over. First, you must cut the perimeter strip to the same level as the DCM Pro mat. Then, apply a suitable waterproof adhesive to the mat, to the walls and to any penetrations through the mat, 100mm either side of the joint, 
ensuring there are no gaps or voids. Cut a length of waterproofing tape and press it into the adhesive using a trowel. This will remove any air gaps or creases. Reapply the removed portion of the perimeter strip over the top of the waterproofing tape flush with the floor. Apply a layer of waterproof adhesive 100 millimeters either side of the joint. Be sure to check that the cavities are fully filled. Ensure there is a full bed of adhesive over the cold tail and termination joints with no air pockets. Cut a suitable length of waterproofing tape and press it into the adhesive using a trowel. Again, make sure that all air gaps and creases are removed. Where joints are required, overlap the tape by 100 millimeters, bonding the two lengths together with a layer of adhesive. Underfloor heating performs most efficiently with conductive, low-resistance floor finishes such as stone and tiles. It is possible to install the heating cable under floor finishes such as wood, vinyl or carpet by applying 10 millimeters of self-leveling compound over the DCM Pro mat and cable. It is important to check with the flooring manufacturer whether the floor covering is suitable for use with underfloor heating. If in doubt, call Warm-Up's 24-7 free technical helpline on 0345 345 2288. When tiling, cover the installation with a full bed of flexible tile adhesive using a notched trowel. Take care not to damage or dislodge the heating cable. If using tiles smaller than 90 mm, cover the installation with a levelling compound first. Please ensure that the tile adhesive used is compatible with underfloor heating and suitable for application onto non-porous materials such as the DCM Pro mat. Carefully lay the tiles and press into the adhesive bed. Remove one of the tiles to ensure you are getting an even coverage of adhesive. Tiles must not be removed once the adhesive has set. Doing so will damage the heater. Grout the floor as soon as possible. Do not use the heater to accelerate the curing process of the adhesive or leveling compound. Cut the perimeter strip flush with the tiles or leveling compound using a utility knife. Conduct the same sequence of resistance tests as before to make sure the heater and floor sensor was not damaged during tiling. Before you install your thermostat, make sure you isolate the power supply to the thermostat. Wire the thermostat as per the wiring diagram in your thermostat installation manual. The power supply, heating cable and floor sensor will have to be wired into the terminals at the back of the thermostat. Once correctly wired, reattach the front housing and screw both closing screws to secure the face and complete your installation. Consult the installation manuals for troubleshooting issues, such as the floor not heating up, the heater tripping the RCD, and many more. If you do not find an answer in the manual, call our 24-7 technical helpline on 0345 345 2288.